nothing's completed yet is correct. Uh, the process is, has gone on. So um, I, I think everyone was aware of the ability to do uh, to file an appeal for interested parties or aggrieved parties to file an appeal. That's in our ordinance. That's allowed in Maryland by case law. Even if we wanted to get around it, we couldn't. Um, not that we wanted to get around it, but if you read our ordinance, plain as day, that's what it is. The cross-examination is in our ordinance. And I know that can, had some people confused because they'd never seen it before. And I don't think there's ever, there's, there may have been, I mean, however many years we've had our HDC, there may have been uh, a cross-examination in the past, but it certainly isn't typical. But arguably, every application is subject to it. So, um, you know, that's why some folks were like, you know, what kind of courtroom is this? Is this, you know, am I subject to it as well? It's like, well, yeah, you are. And the kind of courtroom it is, is it's, it's the um, procedurally correct way to challenge the integrity of, a, of, a, of an application. So everything was done procedurally correct um, with, that, with the May 1st um, hearing. And we certainly got all the information out on the website. Uh, the, the information posted on the website um, and the armory folder is robust. It's been everything back, you know, arguably a year and a half now. Certainly back as far as the um, September, last September meeting. So um, in, 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 a, in a situation where there's a lot of data, a lot of information to sort of get used to, it's understandable how people look at it and say, I don't want to go through all that. And what they hear, you know, they might just defer to, well, somebody might have gone through all that, and what I'm hearing from them is accurate. Um, sometimes that's correct, sometimes it's partially correct, sometimes it's not correct at all. There, there were a couple things that came in during the process um, of, of uh, the potential owner, the gentleman who gave the presentation, Don Ergo. Um, during that due, the due diligence period, and again, as we're, as we're filming, there's been no decision yet. Um, my understanding now is the closing date is the 28th of June. So, uh, but we've gone through a number of closing dates already. But that's my understanding as of today. Having said that, um, you know, the, we know the gentleman has done some due diligence to look at the foundation, he's, he's done soil borings, um, there are some issues that he wanted, that he did want to look into. Really, didn't in, involve the town as much as it involved some, um, uh, you know, state remediation issues, state level potential uh, remediation issues. Uh, those turned out not to be concerns, uh, but he certainly looked into them. Um, when the hotel footprint was pre presented here to the mayor and council. There was a lot of concern, and uh, there were some fair-minded people, some I'd say less than fair-minded people, but there were certainly some fair-minded people who emailed me with their concerns. Um, and so those concerns were, I think, mostly valid uh, as it pertained to, well, as long as the town still has outstanding debt, um, is, was, uh, is there an issue with the bond? You know, does the bond does the bond allow any kind of this act, this kind of activity, which would include air lease rights, because they were proposing to build that hotel is proposed to be built out towards the uh, Marina Center building over town parking lot. Well, ground lease is something we're familiar with. Air lease is something we're not familiar with. So um, one one I know one resident in particular raised that issue in an email. And I believe I responded back to her. I may have responded in a little bit more broadly, but it's like, yeah, that, that one in particular, we've asked our attorney to look into because we're not familiar with it. We, we, we don't do it on, on, on any kind of you know, basis at all. So, um, you know, there was a lot. Um, if it turns out that the development that was, pre that was presented isn't what's proposed, then, yeah, we spent some time and some money looking at a potential that, that wouldn't happen. Um, I think our due diligence is to make sure we do investigate those things, uh, just to make sure that should they pop up, we're not completely caught short. So we did have our attorney look into um, the air lease, 
rights issue. We had our bond council look into um, the, the, the potential to participate in that kind of development um, without it compromising the bond. And it would not have compromised the terms of the bond. Um, and I know that was a question that came up as well. Um, and, and that was a fair question. And the answer is it doesn't. But if that development doesn't, ha doesn't happen, it's a thing we never have to deal with. If the development is footprint, re restaurant footprint only, then all these things that were potential concerns aren't concerns at all. Same thing with um, out, of, out of 98 Cannon was the, um, was it the one-way direction of Water Street? And it, that was never proposed. I was like, well, I mean, air lease rights, okay, that's legitimate. We've looked into that ourselves. Concerns about the bond, um, yeah, that's legitimate. We've looked into that ourselves. Changing the direction of Water Street, um, that one hasn't come up. Um, so as a result, it's like, okay, well, that's not exactly right. And then what about the land use? Well, it's, it's, it's correct to say that in that zoning district, you can't put a hotel by right. So that would involve text amendment, map amendment, something. But it involves a text amendment or a map amendment. It doesn't involve a variance. And uh, it's, variance is a very specific term. Um, there are states that do allow use variance. Maryland is not one of them. Variance process is only for, it's dimensional, it's, it's geospatial. So if I can't make six feet for my side yard, I can get a variance for it if there's a hardship. If, if there's a height restriction and I can't make it, then I, meet, I have to go and get a variance for that. So it's all spatial, it's not use. The use, the use of a, a, the hotel use in the CM district is not allowed. It's not allowed by right. So that would have to go back through a different process. I see. So so you said it was like you can't do this by right is correct, but you, you're going to do this by the variance process. Well, no, you're not going to do it by the variance process. The variance process is going to necessarily go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the text amendment or map amendment process would be would involve the Planning Commission. So that's that's just a, that's inside baseball and civics, um, and I know those are two things that necessarily people aren't um, at a certain point. Um, that property either needs to move on to development or um, face code enforcement and be demolished for the eyesore that it is. Um, and if, if, the, if the developer who's interested purchases it, I'm confident that he doesn't have much interest in maintaining that building one day longer than it needs to be. So that'll be a start. If this deal were to fall through, then I think there's probably a grace period for the current owner to present a redevelopment plan. If no redevelopment plan is forthcoming, then we have to go to code enforcement and say it's time for this burnt out shell to come down. Um, development plan or no development plan. And um, you know, in either event, the vacant lot doesn't generate too much taxes for us. Um, certainly doesn't generate a water bill. So I think everybody's in, certainly doesn't generate, um, you know, more visitors to town to help out the folks in, in every business on, on, in downtown. So I think it's all in all of our interest to see that as an up and functioning um, restaurant or hospitality area sooner rather than later. Uh, and again, um, you hear different things. Right. And I know what I've heard, but since it's not been an application or a proposal yet, um, then it continues to be, you know, in this in the sort of speculative soup. Could be a zoo. It could be check the zoning. It could be any one of these things, and um, or any combination of these things. And and as a result, it uh, I think it becomes one of those things. Well, the town said the town did this, or the town said that, and it's like, well, um, yeah. While while we have to, and we do. You know, our staff, while we prepare for um, any number of potential development possibilities, um, when really not, we haven't thrown in behind anything. So if it's a hotel and there's air lease rights that, that are involved, well, we've done, we've done an X amount of research on that. If there's anything that would potentially be um, a question about the integrity of the loan, well, we've done our research on that. But since those things 
since we've done them, but there's no reason to get into them in public, frankly, you know, we don't. I don't. Um, because it's, it's, it's a civics exercise, which is, which is valuable. Um, at the same time, it, it, it's, it's without context. There's no, it's, it, it's, it's counterfactual. Right? So when people want to ask a concrete question about something that theoretically can happen, there's no answer for them. And, and I think that's where some of the frustration about a lot of things with government, you know, kind of, kind of bumps up. Because we can be transparent. If people don't believe what we're saying, that transparency doesn't help. So that's where the transparency and the trust are, 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 are critical. Because it's important to be trusted, um, not to have people just believe you, you know, out of deference, but out of demonstrated um, either process or demonstrated information or demonstrated willingness to talk, willingness to listen, maybe more importantly, then I think that's where you build up the trust. Also, you, you do what you say you're going to do. And that's why, that's why um, I look at things like the grant-funded projects. Right? I want to have trust with our funders. So we've been very fortunate with other people's money this past year. Now let's get the projects done. This way, the next time we go back, we can say, we've been good stewards. You know, you can trust us next time we ask. And that's, that's, all of that's important. And that has to be, you know, either data-driven or results-driven. In the case of dealing with most people about their questions, it helps to have data. Uh, if you're dealing with the, with the funders, it helps to show results. And that's, that, that's I think, uh, you know, our obligation here in government.